فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحوم كالطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون My brothers and sisters, it is important for us to remind each other every single time to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to develop what is known as taqwa. Taqwa is piety or it is the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some translate it as the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It should be making us develop closeness to Allah and a distance from anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, the favors upon us are many. If you look at the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, we will never be able to count all of them. As he says, If you are going to try to count the gifts of Allah, all of them upon you, you will never be able to count all of them. You will always perhaps count many but not at all every single one of them from among the gifts of allah is the fact that you have iman you have belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fact that you and i are followers of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam the fact that allah brought us into this earth so that we can worship him that's a gift of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are going to be leaving this earth very soon Allah brought us here in order to prove ourselves to him that we will worship him alone. So that is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the fact that he allows us to get married. Subhanallah, subhanallah. It's a great gift of Allah. May Allah make it easy for those who are not married to get married. Once people are married, subhanallah, what happens? The favor of Allah is to bestow them with children, with offspring. Everyone wants to have children. May Allah bless those who don't have children with children. Ameen. When we have children, subhanallah, what happens? We want to have more than one. A lot of the time someone says, you know what? I'd like to have a son and a daughter. And Allah chooses whether he wants to give you sons only, daughters only, sons and daughters, or neither sons nor daughters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us his blessings. Remember, whatever Allah has done for you, he has actually given you what is most suitable for you. That's what he has done. So we may sometimes be upset because of something. Never be upset if you're a true believer. If you're a true believer, you are never upset with the decree and decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From among the gifts of Allah is he gives you siblings, subhanallah. Siblings, meaning your brothers, your sisters. Do you know that's a great gift of Allah? Ask those who don't have brothers and sisters. Even the children, they will tell you, I want a sister, subhanallah. Recently, someone thought I was Santa Claus with the wrong beard color. And they were saying, please, can I have a sister? And this was a little boy. Random, so random, I got a shock. And I said, anyway, may Allah bestow them with guidance, goodness, and whatever they're asking for as well. But the point being, even a little child will say, if you were to ask them, what do you want? They'll say, I want a sister, I want a brother. The reason I raise this today is because as we grow older, we lose the value of these siblings that Allah has bestowed upon us. Allah gives you a gift of a brother, a sister. When you're young, mashallah, you grow up together. I want to start off by speaking to the younger ones. Value your brothers, value your sisters. Trust me, soon they will be married and gone and you won't even be able to spend so much time with them and yet we were arguing and squabbling over small matters while we are young don't let that happen when you're young stand up for one another teach one another guide one another and when i say stand up for one another i don't mean in that which is wrong but in that which is good 
وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان واتقوا الله Help one another when it comes to goodness and righteousness and do not assist one another when it comes to enmity and disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same would apply. Allah says, Allah. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would apply with siblings as well. You help your little brother. You help your sister. You see, you might go to school together. You might come back from school together. And as you grow older, you might choose to go to a different college. And that's where things quickly separate. Things quickly separate, but I want to inform you of another gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today, and that is communications. They've become so easy. You communicate with people much easier than we used to when I was young. And some of those older than me, you probably know how difficult it was. You write a letter, a month later it arrives at your brother. They read it and reply. It takes them a week to do that and it will come back to you a month later. That's two and a half months before you've even said hello. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. Nowadays, you see someone, you can talk to them. The problem is we use it in a wrong way. When last did you call your siblings? No matter where they are, they could be somewhere in another country. When did you phone them? When did you speak to them? When did you have a video call with them? For example, yet we can do that with the wrong people. We can actually call people for business on a daily basis because we want to earn the pound and the dollar while we're in the dunya. But wallahi, we forget to earn the currency of the akhirah. Allah made them your brothers. Allah made them your sisters in order to test you what is going to be your relationship with them. Are you going to fulfill what Allah has instructed you to fulfill? Allah brought me into life. He chose who's going to be my brothers. I need to be aware of that. He chose who's going to be my sisters. I need to value them. I need to help them. I need to reach out to them. He chose my parents, but I don't want to speak much about parents today because that's a topic on its own. I want to speak more about siblings, your brothers, your sisters. As you grow older, you find life takes you to different places. And like I said, even at university level, perhaps one might go to a different city, a different country. How much are you in touch with them? Are you in touch in a positive way or a negative way? Understand it's the plan of Allah. Some people, they pick on their siblings just because this one is younger, just because that one is darker, just because this one perhaps is not doing that well in life, or just because this one has done so well in life, we become jealous, etc. No way. It's a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Baqarah, right at the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about fulfilling the relations that He has instructed you to fulfill. He chose for you your relatives because it's a test for you. If it was not a test, you would have been able to choose your own relatives. The fact that Allah chose, it means it's a test for you. Anything you have had absolutely no say in whatsoever, it's the biggest test for you. Remember, as a human being and as a mu'min, even if your siblings are not believers, how much have you spoken to them? How have you related to them? Sometimes the way we relate to our relatives who perhaps are not Muslim is such that we chase them away from the goodness of Islam. We chase them away in a way that subhanallah, we become an embarrassment for our own deen and our faith. You just have to say, I love you. There's no harm in loving your brothers and sisters who are, belong to a different faith. We love them really because they are our siblings and blood. We may not agree with what they have chosen, but don't we disagree on so many other matters? We love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we share the faith and the deen. But this misrepresentation to say, you're not allowed to love subhanallah just because they're not mu'mineen when they're your brothers and sisters. That is something that is a grave misunderstanding subhanallah. We care for them. Yes, love is of different types. This is the filial love. This is the love of your siblings. Why not? We will reach out to them. I care for you. Do you need anything? Is there anything I can do for you? Do you know if you want to have an impact in somebody's life, you need to show them you care. You need to show them you love them. If you don't do that, you will never have a positive impact in their lives. And if you don't show them by telling them nowadays, it's more important to utter it. Even between husband and wife, you know that a long time back, they did not used to say, I love you as much as we do today. We have to today because they would prefer to feel it rather than to say it with us. We want both the feeling and the saying. You need to repeat it again. But remember to send these messages to your brothers, your sisters and your children and go beyond to those who are related to you closely. The choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
وَالَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَن يُوصَلَ وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخَافُونَ سُوءَ الْحِسَابِ Allah speaks of those who have sound intellect, those who will be earning Jannah. They are the ones who fulfill the relations that Allah has instructed them to fulfill. Starting with your siblings. If you want paradise, you need to fulfill these relations. You need to know how to maintain ties. And this is why if you look at Surah An-Nisa, the opening verse, Allah says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَأَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ Be conscious of Allah, whose name you use when you're asking one another important matters. We use the name of Allah, don't we? Allah says, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be conscious of your relations, your relatives. Who are they? How do you treat them? No matter who they are, you're supposed to be good and kind to your parents, even if they're not Muslim. And you have love for them because they are your parents. And this is why you care for them. You reach out to them, subhanallah. The same would apply to your brothers, your sisters, your family members. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who go out of their way to give that reassurance to those whom they are related to. Remember this. And another verse also in Surah Al-Ra'd, and we find it in Surah Al-Baqarah as well, where Allah warns us. وَالَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ عَهْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِيثَاقِهِ وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلْ وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلَ وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allahu Akbar. Allah says, the cursed are those who break the relations that Allah has instructed them to maintain. The cursed are those who break the relations. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, They are the losers. Allah says, I gave you your brother, I gave you your sister, I gave you your relatives, I gave you your parents, your children. Why do you just go and break the relation with the smallest of reasons? A lot of the times it's connected to money matters. It's connected to sometimes perhaps you got married, they got married, maybe the spouses didn't get along, so they divide the brothers or sisters themselves. Why? That is not the way a mu'min should operate. Allah says, those are the losers. Imagine being called a loser. We would not like that. So the encouragement from this pulpit today is, let's go out of our way to maintain our family ties. Let's message our brothers and sisters to tell them how much we love them. Let's message them to say how much we care for them. Let's call them. Let's invite them over once in a while. Wallahi, ask those who live a singular life with no relatives or those who are in distant lands, they can never ever get together. They will tell you that, you know what? I feel lonely sometimes. They will be so happy when they see another family with so many relatives and they will in their heart feel, I wish I was a part of this. So let's never ever forget the value of family members. The problems you have in your family are a test from Allah. Your challenge is to solve that problem, to resolve the matter. Come what may, solve the problem and Allah will bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. My brothers and sisters, what is absolutely important for us to realize is a true maintainer of family ties is not someone who is in relation with those who, whom he or she is related to when it is convenient, but rather when the ties have been broken, the better of the lot is the one who does not give up trying to mend that relation. Subhanallah. Sometimes you have a family member perhaps suddenly on drugs may Allah protect us or they have chosen a wrong path for example they might have lost the way somewhere depending on how close they are to you the feeling you have in your heart why do we give up don't give up it can be a lifetime your life is going to be average 60 to 70 years if you're lucky a little bit more why do you want to give up in that short space of time you need to keep on trying if someone says well you know I've given up hope my son on drugs 
I've known of people who've been on drugs for 20 years, come out of that, and now they don't miss their salah in the first saf in the masjid. Because someone did not give up. That's why. But there are others give up on them at a very young age and gone. Subhanallah. Maintain a good relation. Maintain a relation in a good way by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until they see the light. And this is why the best of us is the one whom when the other is being difficult and we still continue to be good and kind. And it brings me to the powerful point. Never lose the sense of your goodness because of the evil of someone else. Someone else is being bad. Someone else has sworn you. You don't swear back. But rather what you've got to do is you must make sure that you maintain the goodness. And it is through the durability of your goodness that is maintained that they soon shall see the light by the will of Allah. And minimum is Allah will reward you. When you do good to someone, you're doing good for the sake of Allah. Remember, I am good to you, not because I think you deserve it or I deserve it, but rather because Allah has instructed me to do that. And therefore, it is an honor to be good and kind as per the instruction of Allah. I want to earn the pleasure of Allah. When I do it for Allah, I'm not worried about what you do to me in return. But when I do it for my own gain, then I will only be good to those whom I know when I have put in my investment, they're going to give me back a greater return. May Allah forgive that type of thinking. May Allah make us from those who understand. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وإياكم بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم